What's going on guys, it's Panjana here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Overwatch. In this video, we're going to be going over multiple tips and tricks on how to improve your FPS by going into config files, clean out your PC, and in-game settings as well. Uh, if you go down to the description below, there's going to be time tags if you want to skip to a specific part of the video, but either way, I recommend you watch from the beginning until the end, because there's definitely a whole load of tricks in here, and if you guys can, make sure you head on down into the comment section below and leave your results below, I'd love to know, and if you've got any other questions, let me know down there. This video is for you guys who want to increase your FPS, develop a more stable frame rate, reduce input lag, and just overall gain a more solid, smooth experience on Overwatch, seeming it's a competitive shooter. Okay, so moving on to the tutorial side of things. First off, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to open up Battle.net Launcher and head on to Overwatch. We're first off going to start off by going into the general game settings and what you need to change inside of there. Moving on from that, we're going to be going over the config settings and other things you can do to start out your FPS. But to start off, we're going to go straight into game and we're going to do the in-game settings. Okay, so now inside of Overwatch, we're going to go into our in-game options. Go to the options menu inside of the game and we're going to start off with display mode. I often use full screen or borderless window, depending on what your personal preference is. I would never normally use window because you will not always get the best performance out of windowed mode. So set it to either one of these two. Once you've done that, put your target display to best match. Resolution, I'd always run this at the default native of your monitor and best refresh rate possible. This is for me 1920 by 1080 at 144 hertz. We can go into changing down resolution scaling later on if you're still getting poor performance, but always run the game at your base native resolution and refresh rate. If you want to use completely personal preference, leave this to whatever you want to. I recommend you max it out, but that's completely up to you. Aspect ratio, also personal preference, but I typically play at 16 by 9 because that's pretty much what all monitors are at these days. The uh, V-Sync, you want off, triple buffering off, reduced buffering off. Make sure all three of those are off. They will just increase input lag and stuttering. You want them completely gone. Now, display performance stats. You want to turn this on and hit this little plus button here. Go down to show frame rate, and this will allow you to see a little FPS counter here in the top left. What I recommend you guys go and do now is go into the training zone and just get yourself a base benchmark to see what your system runs that at right now. And then you'll be able to go back to it later on and see how much of an improvement you got. And make sure you guys let me know how much of an improvement you got later on in the comment section. Now what we're going to be doing is going on to the FPS options. So limit FPS, we're going to go to custom, I'm going to put the frame cap all the way up to 300. I don't think there's a hard way to remove this frame cap entirely, but you don't really need more than 300. You need a completely beastly system to be capping out of that at the highest settings anyway. Graphics quality, you can set this preset to anything. If you really want to go for the max FPS and you really want to be hitting that 300 or however high you can possibly get, I'd recommend setting that down to low. But what we want to really want to go down into is the advanced settings. Inside of here, this is pretty much where the majority of your FPS is going to come from. Everything else later on in the video will also add additional increases onto that. And with everything in the video, if you do that together, I guarantee you will see a drastic improvement to your overall FPS. So what we're going to start off by doing is go to your render scale. Defaultly start this one off at 100%. Uh, this is pretty much your last resort. If you're still getting low FPS after this video, I recommend coming into this setting here and bumping this down until you're a visual standpoint of where you're comfortable with it and you also like the performance, but completely ignore this. Leave this 100%. These are my personal settings which I play on. Um, medium texture quality, no need for high. Costs too much on the frame rate. Uh, texture quality filtering I have at one times. Fog detail. You can turn all of these down to low. I wouldn't really go past anything I'm running here, no matter what system you're using. I've got a GTX 970 and a 5820K 6 core i7. And I personally wouldn't recommend anyone go over any of this. It's better to have a stable, fast running game that looks good rather than a choppy, input lag, riddled really beautiful game especially for a competitive shoot like overwatch so copy these settings or potentially even go lower make sure you it doesn't really matter what you have your screenshot resolution to i'd probably set that to like five times but i don't really take screenshots and copy those make sure you have local reflections off and ambient occlusion off and these are also just personal preference uh everything to do with the color blind this can be set to anything you want to this is all personal preference right here but once you've got these settings set we're pretty much done for the in-game settings and you can close out of overwatch make sure you hit the apply button and then close the game next time you boot this will be completely fine now we're going to be moving on to the config side of things. So what you need to do is you need to go to your documents. Hit the Windows button and just type in documents and that'll take you to your Windows documents. Inside of here, you want to go down and find Overwatch. Inside of here, go into settings and you'll find a file called settings underscore v0. 
In here, just double click and you'll be given a screen like this. It will say something about your GPU and a whole bunch of options. Now what I've done in the description below is I've provided everything under my, ren my render 13 um, all the way to audio, which doesn't need to be affected. So everything here is ready for you to copy and paste into here if you want the lowest settings possible. So what we need to do is go into my version, which I'm just going to do right now. Copy, paste, copy. And what you can do is you can just highlight the stuff in your config, hit the backspace key and paste it in. Make sure you leave a space in between there so it looks just the exact same. And the only thing you're going to want to change depending on your screen's refresh rate is this right here. If you're using a normal average monitor and you've not really don't know too much about it, set this to 60. If you're using a gaming one, 120. And if you're using, you should, if you've got 120 hertz or 144, you'll know if you've gone out and bought that. So obviously set that to the corresponding one, whichever you're running. Besides that, you can pretty much just keep everything here to normal. If you guys are still having somewhat poor FPS, I changed the texture quality, which can be found down here to one. But besides that, that's pretty much limiting everything to extremely low values. Hit the save button, and now this is where the important part comes in. To force these settings in game to make sure Overwatch can't defaultly change them, you don't run any risk of like anything happening to your game or anything like that. You right click, go down to properties, and hit it to read only. This means that Overwatch's default things can't override this, and you can force these game settings. Hit apply, hit OK, and this part is completely done. Now we're going to be moving on to the Windows part of the tutorial. First of all, what we're going to do is going to go down into your power options. So just go down into your Windows button and search for power. Go down to power options found here. And this is normally set to balanced. Set it to high performance just by clicking the button there. This basically means that your CPU will be able to draw as much power as it wants to. That might sound a little too scary, but it, trust me, in the long run, it will definitely help out with performance. There's no negative effects of doing this, especially if you're using a desktop PC and not a laptop. I definitely set this to high performance and then hit save. Going on from that, we can do system performance. First off, go down into your Windows key again and hit system. Pull up your system and go onto the left hand side where you see advanced system settings. Click on that, and inside of here, go to the Advanced tab, and you'll see Performance. Hit Settings, and inside of here, you can also change a hell of a lot of stuff about how Windows goes about using uh, drawing performance for general desktop applications which run in the background of your game. This won't increase your FPS by a whole lot, but if you want every little increase you can possibly get for a significant boost overall, then I'd definitely recommend giving this a go, especially because it doesn't really change too much. Um, set this down to adjust Windows for, uh, adjust for best performance, hit apply and hit OK. As you can see, you can't see thumbnails of images anymore. You can turn that specific uh, option back on, which can be found uh, somewhere in there. You can play around with these. You can turn certain ones of these off and turn some ones on that you notice and turn the ones off that you don't need. Obviously, you'll notice your text looks really fucking horrible right now. But if you honestly don't care about that and you just want the best performance in games, set it to this if you want a whole day of gaming or whatever, and then just turn it off at the end of the day. If you don't really care, I'd recommend using your PC like this the entire time. But for me, it doesn't really cause that much of an increase, but definitely give this as a viable option. Next is deleting all the Windows temp files which are no longer used and clogging up your PC. Hit the Windows button down here in the bottom left and type in percent update percent just like that and then hit enter. Inside of here it'll bring you into roaming. What you want to do is go back into the folder before that, which is called update. Go into local and then scroll down until you see temp. Found right here. Inside of here, you're going to have so many folders and so many files, depending on how much stuff and how long it's been since you've cleared out your PC and when you installed Windows. This could be a really small folder. It could be a huge folder, but definitely recommend that you go in here and do this. Highlight from the bottom to the top and then just hit the delete key. Half of the files will not delete in here. It will tell you you can't do this. Just like, as it says here, folder in use, do this for all current items, hit skip. And again, skip. See how much that just removed right there? I don't even know how much file space that's just cleared up for me. It's removed a whole lot of temporary files that are literally never used by this PC because if they were in general gaming applications and whatnot, they would not let me delete them right there. Then just clear your recycling bin. And there you go, you've just cleared out roughly a couple gigs worth most of the time. I remember doing this a couple months back before I reinstalled Windows and this was gigabytes upon gigabytes of random useless temporary files which were used years back and they're just sitting there just clogging up your PC and slowing everything down. So once you've removed all that, we can then move on to the next step. 
Next what we're going to be doing is going into our Windows drives and making sure they're running as best as possible. You do this by going into your Windows File Explorer down here, go to this PC, and we can start off by using whichever drives your games are installed on. For me personally, my games are normally installed on my HDD1, but I can also do my SSD here too. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the hard drive for now. Go down to Properties, and we can then perform a disk cleanup. There's also another thing you can do as well for complete hard drive users. If you're using an SSD, you do not want to do this. I don't think you even can anymore, but never ever defrag an SSD. Just make sure you're definitely using a hard drive and you can do this completely fine. If you're using a hard drive, go down to Tools, go to Optimize and Defragment and run the steps inside of there and use them on all your hard drives. It may take a little bit of time, but I guarantee it's worth doing. For most people who are running SSDs now and hard drives, you can still do this no matter what you're running. So I recommend doing both of these if you have a hard drive. But if you have an SSD or a hard drive, do this just one. Go to Disk Cleanup, select the disk. You can also go inside of there and just hit OK. You can do Clean System Files, run all the stuff in here. I've done this earlier on, it takes a little while, so I'm not going to show you on video. Just let it run its business, and I guarantee you'll see some more sharp improvements inside of Windows. Next, we're going to be going inside of the Overwatch FPS Increase Pack, and we're going to be grabbing the little EXE here, which is the timer resolution. Now, this is a very handy tool for playing any games or any fast moving applications inside of Windows. What it basically means is that the code running is allowed to run faster by Windows and draw more. Which doesn't really sound too much, it might sound a little bit scary, but trust me, this is definitely worth doing. It allows games to run as quick as they possibly want to. So what you want to do before playing any game, or if you're going into a session of gaming or anything like that, or you just boot your PC, I have this running majority of the time, but I often close it if I'm leaving my PC idle, is just keep this program on your desktop, just like that, it doesn't require any setup. Right click, run as admin just to be safe, and then just hit maximum. That allows it to run at the minimum timer, sorry, the maximum timer resolution, which will allow applications to run its code as fast as possible on your PC. This will have a more significant increase in other games. It's very subtle in Overwatch, but I definitely recommend doing it. It will make your game feel a lot more responsive and snappy, and it will also increase frame times. What you need to do then is just set this down to minimize. You'll see it just running there. It's a very, very light application. It doesn't use any sort of uh, CPU utilization or anything like that, so you can just leave that running forever pretty much. I don't even recommend turning it off on, and closing down the program when you're leaving your PC idle or if you're going to watch like YouTube and stuff like that and you're done gaming. Next we want to be doing is going to the Overwatch Increase Pack once more and going into the CCleaner folder. Inside of here you'll find the version of CCleaner which I use, the setup there, just run that, install that to your PC and open up the application. And you'll be given something like this. It looks very weird, uh, especially if you haven't used this program before, but I recommend using this program on your PC around about once a month, maybe once every two months. Um, it doesn't normally take that long as long as you keep on top of it and it helps out a ton with just removing excess crud from your PC which helps slow things down and cost you frame times. So what we want to do is go to the cleaner and just hit the analyze button. This will take a little while depending on how slow your hard drives run and how long ago you last analyzed your PC and how clustered it is, but I definitely recommend letting this thing run through. Once it runs through, it will tell you it can remove this amount of files or whatever. You can also, here on the left hand side, deselect what you don't want to delete. I recommend just running through the default stuff. If you want to keep saved passwords and cookies and stuff like that on web browsers, just scroll down to Chrome if that's what you use and keep that stuff. But that's completely fine for me. So run the cleaner, uh, the analyzer. Once it says it can delete such and such, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes, just hit the run cleaner button. And once that's done, you're completely done. Okay, so once the program is done doing its work, all you have to do is just close it out. Like I said, I recommend using that program around about once a month, maybe twice a month, I'm an absolute push, but I honestly recommend just doing it rather than like the first or the last day of each month. And and your PC should stay cluster free. Another handy program which I'm not going to include in the FPS pack but it will also be in the description below which you can consult to by a link in the description is Driver Booster 4. This program here will help out a fuck ton for any of you who are having weird PC issues and don't know how to solve them in the future or currently and it'll also increase the performance of your PC by keeping the latest drivers installed. Okay so once the program itself is installed into your PC it will run an automatic scan and tell you which drivers need to be updated, which are outdated, and it will allow you to just do that all automatically. Now this can take either a short amount of time or a very long amount of time, maybe a couple of hours or so. If it seems like it's gonna be a long time, leave this on overnight, or go out, do whatever you need to do. Come away from the PC for a little while and it will already be done. To do all of this, all you need to do is just hit the update now button. Press OK, and it will go through each driver one by one. You can also stop this at any time if you wish to. You can automatically reboot your PC afterwards, which I don't really recommend doing. Just kind of like keep this on standby and uh, keep an eye on this just to check up. It's doing everything completely fine. And it will go through each and every individual driver and go and update into the latest versions, which will actually solve a lot of PC issues coming up or currently on your system and speed it up a hell of a lot. 
Next, I want to make sure you guys are running the latest versions of your graphics card drivers. Now, if you do not know which graphics card you have, you can find out very easily just by right clicking anywhere on your desktop and go to display settings. Inside of here, you want to go right down to the bottom under display and hit advanced display settings. Again, go right to the bottom and hit display adapter properties. Right here, you can see my graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. I'm going to leave links in the description below where if you're running an NVIDIA, AMD or Radeon card, which you can consult to and go and download the latest versions of the drivers at the websites provided in the description below. Download them, install them, and I guarantee that will also fix any FPS problems that could be going around. And you always want to keep these things up to date. I recommend looking for new drivers maybe once a month, at absolute most once every two months. I wouldn't leave it longer than that because if you're having issues on your PC, it could just be an out-of-date driver. Again, could have an update which requires a driver update for a graphics card to run optimized. Anything like that, I just recommend that you keep these up to date and you should stay problem free. And last but not least, again, I'm not going to include this in the FPS increase pack because of the download size. It's around about 120 meg is Razer Cortex. Link found in the description below. You need to create an account, but once it's installed, I've been playing around with it a bit and I've actually seen around about 5 to 10% performance increase from FPS in games such like Overwatch and other games I've been trying out. I don't know whether or not I'd recommend this. If you guys are still getting low FPS and you want to try this out and you want to have the best performance possible, it's definitely worth downloading. It has a few neat things in there like the game caster and um, game launches and stuff like that and also deals. It's kind of a cool program, but what we want to be most interested in is the boost. I recommend using manual boost and turning off automatic boost. And before you go to play any game just like this, hit the boost now button. It'll do everything. It'll tell you how much megabytes of RAM it's freeing up and processes suspended. Leave that where it says restore now and just minimize it. Run that in time resolution and then boot your game and you're pretty much good to go at that point. Again, I recommend definitely downloading Razer Cortex and seeing what sort of an improvement it gives you or whether or not you want to continue running it. Either way, it's kind of a decent program and you can also just uninstall it with a couple of clicks if you do not like it. Everything.